Whether new shooter, longtime gun owner, or even police officer or soldier, your handgun needs a Crimson Trace laser sight or light. Get the confidence and reliability you need to protect family, home, and country. Crimson Trace. <laughs> Today on Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, a brand new OWB holster for everyday carry, upgrading your trigger, plus your range reports. Call Tom now at 866-825-5486. That's 866-TALK-GUN. Now, here's Tom. Whoa, holy cow, settle in. We have a lot to talk about this week on Gun Talk. Hey, I'm Tom Gresham. Glad that you could be with us today. I do want your calls, comments, questions, and complaints. And boy, people are complaining. Uh, They're complaining about me. Um, Every time I mention the presidential election, somebody gets mad at me. Doesn't matter if I mention Trump or Cruz or anybody. Somebody, Somebody likes him and other people hate him and they want to know what's wrong with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. We we we'll talk about it. You want to go there? Sure, we'll talk about it. Um, it's a bloody mess, is what it is. Also, we have uh, some court decisions that are going to drive you crazy. Really nuts, so stuff. We have uh, students for campus carry doing a, 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 a an empty holster. It's hard for me to even imagine this. Doing an empty holster protest, i.e., just a holster, no gun, right? And the police are saying, you have to have a permit for the weapon. Where's the weapon? It's an empty holster. I understand that. So where's the weapon? It's an empty holster protest. Right. Well, we're going to have to write you up. For what? (laughs) It it, it, it goes on. The video is amazing. You're going, come on, guys. Really? You really? I mean... Ay, ay, ay. Just a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff going on. Mississippi goes constitutional carry and also having guns in churches. Good moves all the way around. Although, I will have to admit, and I, you know I've said this before, I am torn on what we call constitutional carry, permitless carry. I absolutely support it. For those who didn't quite understand that, because there's always somebody that says, I can't believe Gresham opposes this. I absolutely support it. Got it? Okay. And at the same time, I am such a strong proponent of getting training. Any training is better than no training. Even a little concealed carry class where it just tells you about the laws it's not really like firearms training, but it's something. Now, the other side of that is, you know, maybe I don't need to worry because other states have been, they've had constitutional carry, permitless carry for a while, and there does not seem to be any problems there. So maybe I'm worrying about nothing. I don't know, but I just God, I feel so strongly about the benefits of getting training I don't know. I get, as I say, I'm torn. I get pulled in two directions. I, I absolutely support the whole idea of you should not have to get a permission slip to exercise a constitutional right. You should not have to get a permission slip and say, Mother, may I, and pay money to somebody to exercise your First Amendment free speech rights. Nor should you have to do that for your Second Amendment rights. Well, okay, let's take that and go somewhere with that. Then what should we do, all of us, together, collectively, if we think training is a good thing and we think information and education is a good thing and we would like for people who carry guns for personal protection, good, honest, law-abiding people to know more about when and where I can carry and what is my legal responsibility, what are the legal restrictions, if we don't have to go to a class to get that, then is there a way, this is my question to you, is there a way for us to try to get that information to the public at large. How would you propose that we go about doing that? Or do you think I'm just worrying about nothing? It's just needless worrying. Our number is 866-TALK-GUN, 866-TALK-GUN. Easier, honestly, if you just dial 1 and then Tom, 
Talk Gun. That'll also get you in there. Uh, you can, of course, join us on Twitter, where I am at Gun Talk. We have a conversation going on there the entire show. And if you have a question or a comment or some brickbats to throw our way, absolutely, this is your time. We Here's what I've done. We've set aside this first hour of the show today. We have no guests. It's you and me. The floor is open for whatever you want to talk about. Well, for the most part. You know, I mean, come on. Uh, but we want to keep it firearms related and safety and responsibility firmly in mind when we do that. But we'll go wherever you want to go. And if you don't like guns, if you just landed on this and you're going, what the devil is this? Call me. I'll give you the floor. I'd like to know. One of the things I never understood is people say, I hate guns. How do you hate a thing? I don't get that. Truly, I don't. I can only surmise that one must somehow think that firearms are used only for harming people, and maybe if you work from that misperception, you think, well, that I hate guns because they're only used to murder people. I guess maybe, okay, if that's where you're coming from, that would make sense. (laughs) Jim said, that's like saying, I hate farming implements. (laughs) Yeah, but who doesn't? Come on, really. Hey, Ray, give me a break. Who doesn't hate those things? Uh, (laughs) And we have a lawsuit coming out of the Newtown murders. Families of the victims suing the gun maker. Now, there is a law that says they can't do this. There is a law that protects, it's it's called the Protection of Lawful Commerce in Arms Act. It was born out of the 30-plus junk lawsuits that were designed, let me say that again, they were designed to destroy the firearms industry. There's no bones about it. They said, our goal is to have enough lawsuits here where we can crush the firearms industry and there will be no more gun makers in America. We'll do it through the legal system because we can't do it through the legislature. The will of the people is too strong. It's too much against us. So we're going to use the courts to destroy the Second Amendment and the firearms industry. That's what they said. And so Congress passed the Protection in Lawful Commerce and Arms Act, which simply says this. And, oh my God, Hillary Clinton keeps lying about this. It's crazy. And the media parrots her lies. She keeps saying, well, it gives... The firearms industry, complete immunity from lawsuits. Well, that's a lie. All it says is you can't hold a gun maker responsible for the illegal actions of a third party. A gun maker makes a gun legally. A gun maker ships a gun under strict regulations to either a distributor or to a firearms dealer who are required to store and log and ship these guns under very strict regulation. The firearms dealer has to store the guns and keep records of the guns under strict regulation. And then when that firearm is sold to an individual from the gun store, not the manufacturer, the gun store, because gun makers don't sell guns to people, then the FBI is the third party. You have the gun store, the person who's buying the gun, and in the middle is the FBI. And the deal cannot go through, the sale cannot go through unless the FBI says, yes, we've looked at it, this person's okay, go ahead. Every single time, every single gun that's manufactured, that's how it works. It's made, it's shipped to a distributor, and then to a dealer, sometimes directly to a dealer. And then when the sale goes to the individual, the FBI is involved. So the lawsuit wants to hold Remington responsible for the murders at Newtown. Understanding, of course, that the person who bought the gun did not commit the crime. In fact, the person who bought the gun, Adam Lanz's mother, was the first victim. She was murdered by her son. How would Remington have been able to perhaps ever project that a gun that was sold legally to a person who owned it legally, who stored it safely and responsibly, would be murdered by her crazy son. It's bizarre. 
it's weird. And a judge has decided to let this lawsuit go forward. Ay, 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 ay. 866 Talk Gun. What's your take? What are you hearing? What have you been shooting? Oh, when we come back, I'll tell you about a hog. Actually, several hogs. We shot a hog with a 45 automatic. Or yes, yes, yes. A 45 ACP with very cool, state of the art bullets. Report coming up. We'll be right back with more gun talk. XDM 3.8 Compact from Springfield Armory is two guns in one. Use as your concealed carry gun with a compact magazine and use the extended magazine for home defense. Carry 13 rounds of 9mm in the compact magazine and a whopping 19 rounds in the extended magazine. To see the entire family of Springfield Armory XDM pistols, go to SpringfieldArmory.com. That's SpringfieldArmory.com. You spent the entire morning in a blind, waiting for your shot. Then, missed it and spooked all the big game for miles. Every hunter dreams about the one that got away. And at SilencerShop.com, we make dreams come true. Shooting suppressed means there's no big bang, no violent recoil, and no watching your prize get away because you couldn't get off a follow-up shot. Want a trophy mount on your wall? Put a can on your rifle from SilencerShop.com. Making the world a quieter place. No matter what gun you have, you want it to hit harder, shoot faster and flatter, and be more accurate. You get all that with the ammunition from Double Tap. Double Tap's experts select the best bullets, then load them to higher velocities while keeping safe pressures. Shoot small groups. Shoot farther. Use custom hunting loads in your handgun or rifle. Even fire two projectiles with one shot. DoubleTapAmmo.com. That's DoubleTapAmmo.com. You got your carry permit, and that's good. But you know you could use more training. Get the DVDs, which have what you need. Springfield Armory presents Concealed Carry 1 and Concealed Carry 2 with Bata Group. Learn specific concealed carry skills from Top Gun fighting trainers. Get trained. Be prepared. This really is life and death. ShopGunTalk.com That's ShopGunTalk.com. The world can be a dangerous place. Gear up with the industry's original and most trusted laser sighting system from Crimson Trace. Equipping your firearm with laser and light systems will enhance your effectiveness and help keep you and your family out of harm's way. Call 800-442-2406. Or visit CrimsonTrace.com and receive a free copy of our new laser training video, The Laser's Edge, Crimson Trace. Oh, 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 I have to mention this also. In this lawsuit uh, against Bushmaster and Remington, the Newtown, the family of the Newtown victims, Try to hold Remington and Bushmaster, the makers of the firearm, responsible for the murders committed by Adam Lanza after stealing the gun from his mother. You'll love this. In the lawsuit, the ruling also states, quote, The plaintiffs further allege that the defendants, all makers and sellers of the Bushmaster XM15-E2S, know that civilians are unfit to operate AR-15s. Huh. Who'd have thunk it? Even the USA Today <laughs> said that's a bunch of hooey. Uh, they, say, they said, uh, suing gun makers and gun stores for selling a weapon used by a deranged young man to slaughter people is not unlike suing the maker and seller of a car that a demented driver slams into a crowd of people. Exactly. Thank you, USA Today. Holy cow. Oh, wow. Uh, line two. Let's get uh, Kevin out of North Dakota. Hey, Kevin, welcome to Gun Talk. Hey, how are you doing? I am good. What you thinking? Well, I'm thinking that I, I want to agree with you on a couple of points. First of all, 
your first point. I'm a, I'm a former U.S. Marine sergeant. I have some of the best firearms training that's available in the world, and yet I will not carry until I am trained and, and understand where and when I can use this weapon. So I agree with you. There has to be training. We can't just, you know, open this up to the Old West. I, I definitely am going to get my carry permit, but that's, you know, it's important to get that training. Second of all, I'd like to agree with you on this lawsuit. This lawsuit is, you know, as you said, it's not even a veiled attempt to take away firearms. It's, it's, it's a, a, a straightforward attempt to remove our abilities to defend ourselves. That's really all I have. Well, okay. Well, I mean, I think you nailed it, Kevin. Look, thanks for the call. I mean, that's exactly it. The idea is uh, the gun banners and the gun ban industry hate the law that was passed by Congress, the Protection of Lawful Commerce and Arms Act. They hate the fact that they can't get gun bans passed by Congress and they can't get guns outlawed by Congress and the will of the people keeps growing against them more and more and more and more people say they should be able to have guns for self-defense and more and more people say you should be able to buy an AR-15. And so they're losing the public battle. So now they're going back and saying, you know, the only chance we have here is to get some really whacked out, super liberal, left leaning judges to crush the firearms industry and hold them legally responsible. Now, here's the deal for those who don't remember this now, we're going back almost 20 years. There were more than 30 lawsuits filed against the gun companies, charging them, alleging that they were somehow responsible for the criminal use of their guns. All that had to happen to end firearm sales in the United States, I'm not overstating this, all that had to happen was to lose one, just one of those lawsuits. People would have gotten out of the business, they would have closed the doors, they would have said, we we can't possibly have enough insurance, insurance companies would run, we can't cover the cost of the criminal misuse of our products, even though we make them safely and responsibly, and we're highly regulated. Maybe I mean, you could argue that guns are the most highly regulated consumer product in America. I love when people say, oh, well, teddy bears are more regulated. Really? Do you have to get the okay of the FBI to buy a teddy bear? Are you mental? Holy smoke. Uh, Line one, Les is with us out of Saline, Louisiana. Uh, Les, you got a question about this constitutional carry. Yes, Tom. At first glance, it sounded wonderful, and I understand there's a bill in Louisiana legislature for that, but I'm wondering, my uh, concealed carry license has reciprocity in other states. If I don't have Mm -hmm. a concealed carry license, what does that do for my carry in these other states? You don't do it. You don't have it. And that's a great point. What what has happened is in some of the states where, I think maybe all the states, where they do have constitutional carry, you still can get a carry permit. That way, you have reciprocity as you travel. You can carry when you go to other states. Uh, Let me touch, and look, Les, I appreciate you bringing this up, and thank you for the call. Let me touch on something that was happening in Louisiana. In fact, it's happening right now, because it's it's an interesting lesson. When politicians get involved in things they don't know anything about, they don't know what they're doing, we have a state legislature, legislator, Mr. Ivey, who introduced the constitutional carry provision. But because some of these people really don't know what they're doing, in this case, he said, well, let's put it on the ballot. Let's do a referendum on it. That's an incredibly bad idea. Why, you say? Because at that point, you... <laughs> Ask Oregon, ask Nevada, where they're fighting right now, you now are in a spending contest with billionaire Bloomberg. You now have to outspend him on advertising dollars. This is a battlefield you do not want to enter. But they don't think about that. Oh, I didn't know that. I know. 
That's why you really don't need to be doing things like this until you get some expert opinion, i.e., talk to your NRA lobbyist who can say, look, I understand this is where you want to go with this. Not a bad idea. This is the route to go, and this other one that you think might be so good is full of pitfalls and roadblocks and deadfalls and alligators, and it's ugly. You don't want to go there. This is, trust us. We've been there. We understand. Wow. <sighs> There's a reason that you need to talk to people who have been there, done that. You don't go wandering out into the jungle without a guide. And legally, for some of these particularly young legislators who come in, they uh, it's a jungle that they just don't understand. They need, they need a guide. Oh, yeah, by the way, if you do, uh, if you are in a concealed carry place, a uh, state that has constitutional carry, you could get a state from, uh, a permit from another state and use that for reciprocity, and some certainly have been doing that. It's just, you know, another way to go. There you go. Let's see. Um, our time, yes, we're going to do this very quickly. Uh, lo- line four, go down to line four, if you would. Brian's in Texas. Hey, Brian, this lawsuit, what do you How think? How are you doing today? Good. Good. Hey, listen, I was calling because I think the judge is used in this Newtown lawsuit is using procedural rules to protect herself from the um, – liberal politicians that are above her. I think what she's going to do is she'll allow the lawsuit to move forward, um, but either she'll be recused from the case or the next judge will throw it out based on uh, the 2005 law. More, more than likely, you're right. I think you probably have it nailed. It's just that it never should have gotten that far. She never should have ruled this way. She is allowing them to move forward with an adventurous legal argument, which holds no water. But she's thinking, well, I'll let this one go forward. And we'll let basically kicking the can down down the road a little bit. We'll let the next court deal with this one. And, you know, probably you never know what's going to happen there. You just, you just never know. Well, and also, it means we've got to spend a bunch of money to fight this thing that should never have gone forward in the first place. It should have gotten kicked out with the first motion to dismiss. 866-TALK-GUN or just dial me Tom Talk Gun. I'm Tom Gresham. You're listening to Gun Talk. Sign up for our Gun Talk newsletter and join the Truth Squad at www.guntalk.com. Now, back to Gun Talk with Washington Times opinion page regular contributor, Tom Gresham. All right, back with you. Lots of stuff going on. By the way, be sure to check it out. The American Marksman competition qualifying is live. It ranges all over the country. You can go to the website. You can register, find a range of where you can go and compete for this. This is this can get you into and be on a very cool reality show with shooting as its core activity. Uh, you go to the website ammarksman.com. That's ammarksman.com. Find a range near you and go shoot. See if you can qualify. Pretty cool stuff. By the way, also uh, on Sportsman Channel this week, our two television shows are running. Guns and Gear. This week on Guns and Gear, we've got Double Tap Ammunition, their DT Long Range Ammo the competition ready 3TM rifle from Stag Arms, Six Hours P320, a full line of green lasers from Crimson Trace. It goes on and on. Also on Sportsman Channel, we've got uh, the Gun Talk Show, the Bianchi Cup. Very cool show. And frankly, uh, I would watch it. I'm going to ask you to watch it, if only to see our friend Jim Clark, one of the last, uh, well, it's the last video we had a chance to make with him before he uh, died last year. So. Uh, I guess earlier this year. Very cool show, Bianchi Cup, on Sportsman Channel this week on our Gun Talk show. Line three, Tom's with us out of Davenport, Iowa. Talking about this election, Tom, what's your take? Well, I want to start off with the fact that I'm a Cruz supporter, and I am a hashtag never Trump up until this point. I'm a hashtag never Trump because I want Cruz to get the nomination, but if Trump does end up getting it, I would end up voting for him because I'm going to do like you. I'm going to get a get a bottle, be three sheets of wind, and I'm going to fill out an absentee ballot that says Donald Trump because that way I don't have to be drunk with polls. Um, there you go. But 
the whole thing is I, I'm a firm believer in the fact that the press is quite willing to get Donald Trump there right now so that way they can set him up because they have so much mm-hmm. information on the holding back that – that they're not I, I do not disagree with you at all. I, I, well, yeah, we can actually see it now. They're actually starting, the media is starting to kind of unleash on Trump. And where they were holding back for a while, they're starting to unleash a little bit. But I think you're right. They're, there's a lot more they're going to do, and they'll just hammer him. And, and look, and people get upset with me when I say, look, I don't care. And honestly... You know what I figured out, and this is, okay, and look, I appreciate the call, Tom. I, I I have kind of figured out in looking at this and looking at myself and how do I feel about stuff. I'm probably not really a Republican. I'm probably really more of a libertarian. I'm a leave me the H alone, small government, leave people alone, get out of their way, don't mess with them. Quit trying to tell people how to live their lives kind of person. When you, and I think probably a lot of people who call themselves Republicans or conservatives are actually more libertarian. Do you really want the government telling you how to live your life? The Republicans do that about as much as the Democrats do. But I'm also a realist. And the realist in me says there will not be a Democrat, a libertarian president. And in true Ross Perot fashion, any vote for any third party is a vote for Hillary Clinton. If you are a, if you normally would vote Republican, and if you say, well, if X gets nominated, I don't care who it is, on the Republican side, then I'm going to walk. I'm going to go hunting. I'm not going to vote. I'm going to leave the party. What you're saying is, I like the sound of this phrase. President of the United States, Hillary Clinton. And you'll like it when you hear the news say, President Hillary Clinton has nominated her third Supreme Court justice. Because that's what's on the line. At a certain point... You just have to say, you know, being an adult means sometimes having to make a decision that's unpleasant. Being an adult sometimes means, you know, I don't get everything I want, but I got to stop the losses. There are times in life. That's where we end up. People, and people say, well, why don't you support Cruz now so we don't have to face that? Well, I've said before, I think Cruz is definitely better, I mean, infinitely better on the, on the Second Amendment. The Trump guys go, no, 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 Ted's very, very Second Amendment. Okay, cool, I get it, I understand, I'm just saying. But, you know, but I probably would take issue with a lot of Cruz's other positions, but I'm going to vote on the gun issue. I think I probably disagree with him on most other issues when <laughs> I think about it, but I'm still going to vote on the gun issue. It's just where I am. So we're faced with this mess. And I will tell you, honestly, I, I there are people in power in the Republican Party and the puppeteers who are pulling the strings who would rather have Hillary Clinton elected. I'm talking about Republicans, power brokers, who would rather have Hillary Clinton elected than have Donald Trump or or Ted Cruz come in and blow up their party. And they're perfectly okay with eight years of her because they will still be power brokers. That's how ugly it is. Maybe it's always been that way and we just didn't pay attention. Maybe it's only this particular campaign, this particular election, that's pulled back the curtain and shined some light on what's actually going on back there. I don't know. Could be... That's what's going on. I I just know it feels messy and ugly with a overpowering aroma of dishonesty. And even with all of that, I simply have to say I cannot in any form or fashion do anything 
that will let Hillary Clinton get elected when she stands there and proudly proclaims she wants to ban guns. She stands there and proudly proclaims that the Supreme Court got it wrong on the Heller decision saying that people have a right to own guns and that she will fix that if elected president. And whoever gets elected president is going to have two or three opportunities to put new justices on the Supreme Court. That's not a four-year or an eight-year thing. That's a 30 or 35-year thing. That's a two-generation thing. And let me just put a fine point on that. You give them two generations of Americans who grew up under that, they will think that's normal the way people today think it's normal to have to go to a licensed gun dealer to buy a gun. That's not normal. The way people today have grown up with it and they think that it's normal to have an age limit on being able to buy a gun. That's not normal. The way people today have lived under it for so long, they think it's normal to not be able to buy a gun by mail order and have it shipped to your house like we used to from Sears Roebuck. That's not normal. What we live under today is not normal. But you give them two generations of living under a Hillary Clinton Supreme Court making those kinds of decisions, there is no coming back. That's why I say if she's elected, it is, for all intents and purposes, the end of the Second Amendment. I'll be right back. Bigfoot gun belts made with legendary leather and quality craftsmanship are built to support the full weight of even the heaviest handgun. With a spring steel core embedded between two layers of rich English bridal leather, you'll never deal with a sagging belt ever again. Each gun belt is handmade with the blood, sweat, and beards of dedicated, skilled Pacific Northwest belt makers. Capture your gun belt for as low as fifty-four eighty-eight at BigfootGunBelts.com. In the war on terror. Fighting crime in the streets, in competition, and homes around the world. One name in firearms stands out. Sig Sauer. Our pistols and rifles are renowned for their unfailing performance. This same commitment to excellence can be found in our line of SIGTAC accessories and the training offered by the Sig Sauer Academy. For unmatched quality, reliability, and innovation when it counts, choose Sig Sauer. Visit SigSauer.com today. If you're like me, you don't have money to burn, but you still want to buy guns, ammo, and accessories. That's why we created Gun Dealio. That's a free, yes, a free smartphone app. Just download it and start getting the deals. Could be discounts, offers of free magazines for your gun, or you could be the first to hear about new stuff from gun makers. Here's how it works. With Gun Dealio on your phone, you get alerts when you enter a gun store. Special deals, you know. You don't have to do a thing. It'll do a lot of other cool things, like let you watch gun videos and listen to Gun Talk podcast. Plus, check it anytime for hundreds of deals and offers. Getting more while spending less. Smart, huh? Gun Dealio. Made in America. Gluten free at the App Store and Google Play or gundelio.com. Hardcore tactical professionals who put their lives on the line every day depend on Surefire. For decades, Surefire has built the first and finest professional grade flashlights, weapon mounted lights, hearing protection, and suppressors. We build the best because lives depend on it, and we know failure is not an option. We design, engineer, and manufacture Surefire products right here in the U.S. For you, for your loved ones, Surefire. American built, American strong. Surefire.com. All right, back with you here. Tom Gresham, 866-TALK-GUN, gets you in here. Scott has called in. He's on line two, coming out of Carson City, Nevada. Hey, Scott, I gather you disagree with something I said here. What's up? Well, you made the comparison between uh, guns killing people and uh, guns being used illegally to kill people and cars mm-hmm. being used illegally to kill people. Mm-hmm. And I think if I were, I'm, I'm a gun owner. Um, in fact, my carry weapon is a Boberg uh, XR9S, which we can talk about that later. But if I were on the anti-gun lobby, I would say something like, what is the purpose of a car? Mm-hmm. 
and you would answer, to transport people. The purpose of a gun is to throw a projectile with varying amounts of force in order to hit something. So the Mm -hmm. very purpose of the manufacture of the gun originally was to kill things. I mean, you had to hunt. Oh, no, 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 whoa, 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 stop, 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 stop right there. No, let's back up. See, you have made a leap of logic that does not, is not supportable. And I hear this all the time. People say, well, the purpose of a gun is to kill people. No. If that were true, then 99.9% of the purposes of the uses are failures. Because 99.9% of the use of a firearm does not involve killing people. Would you agree? You said, I did not say the purpose of guns was to kill people. You said that. I'm waiting. Well, I said the purpose of guns was to kill things. Originally, guns were invented for hunting in order to provide food, to put food on probably the table. Probably hunting, hunting and war, probably hunting and war originally. But the current oh. modern use of a gun is not to kill people or even to hunt. Because most well, guns... Well, that's not entirely exclusive. Are, are, no, I said the I, I said mean, the it, primary purpose of a gun today, what they are actually used for, is target shooting. Most of the rounds fired out of guns are not for hunting, and they're not for self defense. They're for target shooting. And if the media were to cover guns, the way people think of as cars, we would have ninety nine point nine stories out of a hundred about gun use would not involve anybody getting hurt. And if that were the case, and here's where I'm going with this, and I appreciate what you're saying. I get what you're saying, Scott. But if that were the case, then people would not have this skewed view of firearms where the public, all they hear about it for the most part is crime, 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 murders, murders. And so they think, well, gee, that's pretty much what guns are used for these days. My point being that you can't hold a gun maker responsible for something they didn't do. You can't say Remington is responsible for someone who gets this legally purchased gun, steals it, murders someone to take the gun, and then goes and kills people with it. I mean, just this week— in the Seattle area, we had a 19-year-old man driving a Dodge 4x4 pickup on a suspended license. He plows into several middle school students, and turns out he had a history of seizures. So now, should he be held responsible for that, or should the truck maker be held responsible for that? So, I, I, I got to tell you, I think that in the court of public opinion— the juxtaposition of saying, why would we not hold Chevrolet responsible for drunk drivers if we're going to hold Remington responsible for the misuse of their product? I think that rings clearly and true. Even USA Today this week used that example. It shows what a ridiculous concept it is, and it shows the mental gymnastics to which the gun ban industry will go to try to get another gun ban put in. And make no mistake, if they can get a single ruling that says a gun maker is responsible for the third, the actions of a third party, the illegal actions of a third party, it's the end of gun making. If it's the end of gun making, you can't buy a gun. Gun stores go away. Ammunition goes away. It all goes away. And believe me, that's the plan. To not understand that is to just live in a fantasy world. Straight to the phones, line one, Gary's in Cedar City, Utah. Hey, Gary. 
sick. I, I was just calling under the new uh, open carry law that they have here in Utah. They say you can carry an unloaded firearm, which under their rules consists of has to be two actions before it fires. And that'd pretty much be like nothing in the chamber on a semi-auto, rack the slide and pull the trigger on your gut. And I was wondering if on a single action revolver, if you carry it fully loaded and still be under the same rule because it takes two actions. Ooh, interesting. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I you know, you gotta, think you gotta I would cock the hammer. And I think I would trigger before it fires. Right, which would essentially yep. be the same thing as with the semi racking the slide, racking the slide, and pulling the trigger. Hmm. I think before I went real adventurous on that one, I would want a ruling from somebody. Uh, I, I would not want to be the first one to test it out. But I got to yeah. tell you, Gary, I like I like the way you're thinking, man. I haven't been able to get law enforcement or anybody else to even be willing to say, yeah, you're right, you're wrong, whatever. Yeah. H- how new is the law? Um, I believe it was first of the year. Okay. Yeah, I think maybe a letter to uh, the state police or to whoever the, the governing agency is, and or maybe even, a, I swear, well, I, I hate I to even say this. Well, I the state police directly. And they're like, well, it sounds that way, but we don't know. And it's like, what do I do? <laughs> well, I, again, calling is worth nothing. You have to have something in writing, either through email or through a letter. Because whatever uh, you know, whatever they tell you over the phone, you can't hold them to that. You need something printed in, in writing. I, I'll look into it, but you keep poking around, see what we can find out. I appreciate that, Gary. Uh, I, I noticed that uh, Gary is in uh, Cedar City, Iowa. Also, if you go to Cedar City, Iowa, you're going to find one of the coolest ammo companies out there, Double Tap Ammo. Uh, talking with Mike McNett the other day, and he just keeps doing cooler and cooler things. I was advising a buddy. He wanted to go out in bear, bear country. Everybody wants to know bear gun. But he wanted to carry a forty five automatic. I said, well, you know, i got to tell you, for 40, 45 ACP is marginal, honestly, on bears. But if you're going to do it, uh, you need hard cast bullets. Double Tap has a good line of those on their website, doubletapammo.net. But here's the thing, a little secret out there. Nobody knows. The 450 SMC cartridge, 450 SMC, you can shoot that in your 45 auto. It is identical, in essence, to your 45 auto. It's hotter. You're not going to want to shoot a lot of them. But Mike's loads with the 450 SMC, they'll go through a bear. They'll go through a hog. It's breathtaking. It's stunning what they do. And I had no idea. I did not know about the uh, the 450 SMC until Mike came down and was doing some shooting with us at the range. And he introduced us to that. We, <laughs> we lined up like a dozen gallon milk jugs, right? Because that's one of the ways we measure penetration. I think we went through all of them. I, I don't remember exactly, but I, I, I know we went through like a bunch. It was like two or two and a half times the penetration we get with regular expanding good ammo using the, the hard cast lead bullets. I, it was something else. So if I were going to carry a handgun into bear country, uh, I'd be looking for hard cast bullets, and I'd be on the Double Tap website. That's doubletapammo.net, and that uh, take a look, and you can buy them directly there. Tell you what, when we come back, I want to talk about making your gun better. We're going to figure out you know, what we can do with that. We we'll talk triggers, talk other things. Also, is anybody carrying a red dot sight on their concealed carry pistol? Something I'm considering doing. I'd like to get range reports on that. We'll be right back with more gun talk. <laughs> 